If you're a streamer, there's a good chance you're trying to record content for other platforms such as Instagram, TikTok, or most importantly, YouTube. In this video, I'm going to go over the settings that are best for your Streamlabs OBS to get the best quality out of your PC for the best recording possible for your viewers. I can't stress enough how important it is that you are able to record good quality videos for other social media platforms, including YouTube. So make sure you put in the best settings possible that I'm going to go through right now so you have the best chance at increasing your content creation career. If you do enjoy the video, make sure you drop a like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the content creation tips, tricks and coaching that is coming out from this channel. So when we head on over to our Streamlabs OBS and open up the settings menu in the bottom left, the only two tabs that we're really going to be looking for for the best basic settings for recording are going to be the output tab and the video tab. Now, if you saw my best streaming tips video, this is far less complicated than measuring your internet speed and your bit rate. It's just going to depend on how good your PC is and some trial and error will be more than enough to figure out what's going to work best for you. But here's the best settings for you to look into. First, let's head into the video tab. So with the video tab, you want the base canvas resolution to be whatever your monitor is naturally set to for most of you that'll be 1920 by 1080 but Streamlabs OBS should pick this up based on your window settings. As for the output scaled resolution this is going to be the resolution that you're going to put out to the different social media platforms. If you're trying to record for YouTube content then I recommend you putting this at 1920 by 1080. If your PC is really struggling you don't think you can put out that high quality of a video then 1280 by 720 is going to be the next drop down for you. If you are just uploading TikToks and Instagram reels then honestly you can switch this over to make it easy for yourself by putting it at 1080 by 1920 the flip which is the perfect size for TikTok and Instagram. Your downscale filter it wants to be set to lands cost sharpening scale 32 samples your FPS type set to common FPS values and that common FPS value should be 60 unless your PC is really struggling in which case you can take it down to 50 but I think 60 should be fine for most PCs. Heading on over then to the output tab. When you open up the output tab you want to head over to the second column which is the recording settings and this is what you're going to be able to change to adjust the most for your recording setup. The type you want to put at is a standard many of you won't have a different option for this but standard is definitely the way regardless the recording path is very simply where your recorded videos are going to end up on your pc so put these in a folder and a location that is nice and easy and memorable for you so you can get back to these recordings whenever you're looking for them because you're most likely going to want to be recording videos you want to be put in your recording format into mp4 this will give you both good audio and video options so you can mess around with in your editing software and this recording format goes into most editing softwares without a problem so mp4 really is the way you want to go for your recording format unless you have a very specific niche that you know about that you need to change it to. When it comes to audio tracks this is quite important and you're going to want to head down to your audio mixer in the bottom right of your Streamlabs so that you can actually mess around with what audio is going to come through your recording. When you record an mp4 video it has multiple audio tracks depending on how many audio tracks you set it to and this is a great way of you being able to separate your audio so you can mess with them individually. So what I recommend is you put your desktop audio on one track and you put your mic audio on a different track. That means that your desktop sounds will come through on one thing and you can manipulate that in your editing software and your mic volume can go in a different track to be manipulated separately. The issue with, and especially when you take things from VODs on streams and download them, they're all on one track. So if the volumes are slightly off or you wanna just mute the game so your voice is louder or mute your voice so the game is louder or do any fun editing that way, you can't really. So every single source of sound and audio that you want to come through your recording, I would recommend putting on different tracks so that you can manipulate them separately. Let's say you have your desktop sound on audio track one and your mic sound on audio track two. Well, they're the only two tracks that you need to be messing with. So when you go back into your output settings, just select audio track one and audio track two. Under recording, this is gonna be your encoder and I recommend you setting it to hardware NVENC new if you have a NVIDIA graphics card. If you don't, you're gonna to wanna to be setting this to software X264. If you're using the hardware NVENC new encoder, then the rate control I'm gonna recommend that you put as is actually CQP. CQP stands for constant quantization parameter is my preferred rate control for recording with NVENC new. The reason for this is because it's actually one of the better ones that giving you consistent high quality recordings and I noticed that when I use some of the other rate controls it would dip my quality control out a lot and I much preferred the consistency I got with CQP. So I recommend that as with many other videos the CQP is the one you want to be using. What this does is it leads to slightly higher quality videos but those files 
sizes will be a little bit bigger. So as long as you have the hard drive space, you shouldn't have a problem with this. And if you constantly refresh your hard drives, so you clear out old recordings or you just buy more hard drives, you have absolutely no problem with this. And it definitely it's worth the quality. As for the CQ level, I recommend anywhere between 14, which is the higher quality and 20, which would be on a lower quality. If you don't have a very good PC, 20 up to 22 at the worst is okay. I personally like 17 is what works best for me and gives me a good quality control. And if you have a really good PC, 14 should do you the trick. There's no real point of going over 14. You really get diminishing returns from your quality control if you do that. Your keyframe interval, I would set to two. Your preset, I'd set to max quality because it's a recording, not a live stream where things can vary in terms of bit rate and upload speed. So I like max quality unless your PC is having issues, in which case just drop it down to the quality setting. Profile set to high, leave look ahead off and turn psycho visual tuning on, GPU set to zero and max B frame set to two. If you're having to use software X264 as your encoder, then very similar to CQP, you're gonna to wanna to select CRF. CRF stands for constant rate factor, which is essentially the same thing as CQP, but for the software X264 version. When it comes to what that CRF value is, very similar to CQP, your lower numbers are your better quality and your higher numbers are your slightly worse quality. And the range that is generally considered is 17 is your good high quality, down to about 24, which would be your lower quality you wouldn't want to dip too far below. Keyframe intervals want to be set to two. Your CPU usage preset should be set to very fast. You can change it to super fast, but there isn't really that many changes from what I've seen online about the difference between them. So very fast will work better and reduce the file size ever so slightly. Profile should be set to high and your tune set to film. For those of you who know a little bit more about recording and know what you want to get out of it, then you can set on either NVENC or X264 your rate control to CBR, which is constant bit rate. From here, you can set a bit rate that you know you might need for your specific recording situation. This is particularly for people who like to do big montages with slow modes and visual effects. Having a higher bit rate here just allows them to do a few more things with those recordings. From there, the rest of the settings are very much what you expect. You wanna set your keyframe interval to two. You wanna set your preset to max quality or quality. You wanna set your profile to high with psycho visual tuning turned on, GPU set at zero and max B frame set at two. That pretty much goes over everything you're gonna to need to start getting recording on your Streamlabs OBS and start getting high quality videos out of your recording setup so you can post it to TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube and finally get more content out there to promote your stream. If you did find this helpful or you did just enjoy the video, make sure you drop a like and also subscribe so you don't miss any more of the coaching tips and tricks that'll be coming out from my channel. And if you're looking for more content right now, click one of the ones available on the screen so you can start getting a kickstart to your streaming career. Wow, <laughs> wow.